Hello and welcome to Let's Learn Computing. I'm Todd Colwell. Today's tutorial is to handle data with Google Forms. It's for Windows PC, although it also works on Mac. Uh, the subject is computing and it's a very versatile tool, but these lessons are aimed at children ages 9 to 12. To prepare for this lesson, you need to make sure that you have Google Apps for Education accounts at your school. And I'm going to assume that you have some familiarity with using Google Apps and Google Drive. The lesson concepts are how computers can be used to collect data using a form and to present the data as well in graphs so they're easier to understand. And also the form cycles. So the easy activities are to create a form, then I'll go through some of the easier options for the questions for the form, and then use the summary of responses feature in forms when the responses go back to the spreadsheet to write about what the student found out. All right, so let's have a look at Google Forms. To make Google Form, you just need to go into Drive and go to New, and Forms is actually hidden by default. So go down to More, and then go to Google Forms. All right, so it's a good idea to get the children to think of a question. Uh, something about a group works well, that um, they can have such a variety of questions in the class. So it's not very good if everyone's creating a form that asks the same question because then you're just going to have the same results. So groups such as sporting teams, um, foods, subjects. And today I'm going to show you a form for collecting children's favorite way of reading. So I'll just show you how to start from the start. So just put the title, favorite way of reading. And the first question, you need to decide which type of question it is. So there's many different options and I'll show you a finished example in a minute. But uh, the first one is usually the name, and that has to be a text question, since you can't possibly list all the names as a multiple choice question. So text. There's also, by the way, an option to have a look at the name and automatically collect it, uh, if you have a Google Apps for Education account up here. So name. All right, so when you click this button, it will require the question. So Google won't let the user submit the form unless they've filled it in, if this box is checked. They so click Done. Now, um, if to get an idea what the form looks like, you can click this button, View Live Form, and then you can see it's quite a bland theme, so I'll show you how to change the theme before we go any further. You can change it at any time. Just change theme, this button over here, and then we can choose a different one. Okay, so it's just a simple case of going to add an item and encourage the children to ask different types of questions so they can see in the responses, uh, different graphs that it's produced. Okay, so let's have a look at one that's finished, but over here. So uh, the name I've got, which way of reading do you like best? So this is a multiple choice question, and you should talk about this. Why is it important to put other? Uh, that's because not everyone thinks the same, and there might be a different way of reading that's not listed on here, which is quite likely, and that you might want to have other. There's on some questions as well, you might also like to put none as well, to be really making sure you can get every single person to fill out the form really accurately. And so in a multiple choice question like this, you can only choose one of these radio boxes. Done. Now this one is a checkbox type question, and there's one question, but it's allowed to have more than one answer. So how do you feel when you read in your favorite way? Do you feel happy and interested or something? So when you go to view life form, you can see that it lets me do one, one of the, only one for the multiple choice and more than one for the checkbox questions. All right, next, uh, this type of question down here is a scale question. I'm gonna go to edit that. You just put in the scale, something rating, agree or disagree, and from one to five or from one to whichever number you like, up to 10, and you can choose um, the words to put what goes on the left and what goes on the right. Done. So. Uh, when it's finished, you can only choose one option from this radio buttons. Next is to insert a picture. That's simply just to go to the menu at the top, insert, and insert an image. And there's an integrated Google search in the insert an image option. Um, or you can do something that's already in the student's drive, or take a snapshot if you um, want to use the camera, or if you just copy and paste the, the website link for the image. Uh, there's many different options for images. Um, the same thing for a video, only for a YouTube video. Just go down to insert a video. All right, so then 
The next type of question is a more advanced um, idea, and that is a grid question. So you've got a few different options, um, agree, disagree, uh, strongly agree, like that, but it's all to do with similar items put together. All right, so to do one of those, go to add item, grid question. All right, so I've showed you multiple choice, checkbox. Uh, I didn't show you this one. It's very, choose from a list. It's very much like multiple choice. You can only choose one answer, but there are many, many options available. A common one uh, is what is your age? You don't want to really have a whole list of all of the possible ages on the form. So you hide the every single option, but only one's possible. So this is a grid one I'm talking about here. So um, that's all related to these statements. All right. All right, so the main difference between how the activities can be differentiated, uh, the type of questions that the children choose to include. So I'll put the medium activities as scale questions and to insert images or videos. And also the challenge activities are from uh, choose from a list because the children might take a while to type a lot of the list items and there's also grid questions are more complicated. All right, so let's have a look at what to do when the form is finished and it's ready to go to stage two of the form cycle and that's to send it out. So you simply go back to here to the editing page and then click the blue button to send the form. All right, so there are many options actually for sending the form. What I did when I taught this to a year five class, I get the children to copy the link and then paste it onto a shared Google spreadsheet that I've shared with them and then the whole class can see all of the links put together. But now there's also Google Classroom that's available or there's um, directly just sending an email. This might be an email group to the whole class that the IT department set up for your school or you can send it to individual teachers or individual students or whoever. All right, so I'll just uh, send an email to myself with this form and then I'll show you what that looks like. All right, so now you can see that I've received an email um, when I click the send the form button and that's really good because the form is actually embedded within the email itself So just to show you how the form behaves All right, and then I click submit Then it gives me a nice message to say that are you sure that you want to send it to this page? And yes, that's okay. And then you get a message to say thank you. Okay, so let's have a look at the responses to do that Go to this one up here. It says view responses now, uh, when you look at the spreadsheet, I've just gone ahead and filled it out a few times using some different names. Um, first, I found that it's useful to put this into wrap mode so, so you can see the text better. So click on the one over here, make sure that all of the rows selected, and then go to this one, text wrapping, and then go to wrap. You can see the questions much better. So I've got Todd, Jessica, and Peter have filled out this form, and you can see I've got slightly different answers. It's a bit hard to go and see patterns from that. So one of the first things that you can do is go to one of the columns that can be sorted and then right click and go to sort sheet A to Z. And then that will put all of the people who put comics together, all of the people who said that they like magazines the best together, websites, etc. So that's one way of seeing the, any patterns, just counting them up manually. Then the children can write a report about what they found. But the most useful uh, feature by far on forms is to go to form and then go to here summary of responses and it will produce really nice graphs for people to see clearly what happened. So you can see we've got a pie chart for which way, um, bar charts, column charts for these types of questions. It just depends on which type of question you ask. And this one at the bottom that I made. All right, and this is uh, how many responses happen per day. So. That's a really good summary of what happened on the form. All right, so that should produce um, really interesting information to answer questions that children want to get answered, and they should learn a lot about each other. I hope you enjoy it, and I'm sure the children will as well. To request a tutorial, or to download a copy of the slides to use in this tutorial, visit letslearncomputing.com. While you're there, please subscribe to the Let's Learn Computing YouTube channel so you don't miss a tutorial. I'm Todd Colwell, thanks for listening and see you next time.